This video will focus on factoring methods for binomials. So we're going to be talking about factoring a difference of squares and factoring a difference of cubes and also factoring a sum of cubes. So let's start out with a, a difference of two squares. Now this polynomial identity for factoring is when you have a squared minus b squared. When you have two terms subtracted that are both perfect squares, it will factor into a plus b times a minus b. Basically you have a times a is a squared, b times b is b squared, and the two middle terms you would get when you do a double distributive property would actually cancel out. So that's why there's only two terms here, and usually you expect to get three terms when you do something like this. But because these two terms are conjugates of each other, they have opposite middle signs, uh, that they will cancel out here and we we'll just have two terms. So. Remember, every time you factor, there's really two things to consider. The first, you're, we're still going to look for a GCF first on every problem, no matter what. That's always the first method. And then we're going to look at what size it is to decide what to do next. And But this whole video, they're going to be binomials. So because they're binomials, these are the methods for, that we're going to be checking to see if they are. So on number one here, we can see that we have... there's no, is is there a GCF? There is no GCF here. So what size is it? Again, they're all binomials. So is this a difference of two squares? Well, we can see we have a square here and a 64 here. We know 64 is a perfect square, so we're already thinking a difference of two squares. So we have x squared minus 8 squared. So this is going to factor into x plus 8 times x minus 8 using that identity for factoring. Number two, is there a GCF? There is not. And we can see, once again, we have a difference of squares because you have x squared minus 13 squared. So you get x plus 13 and x minus 13. Number three, we look for a GCF. There is none. It's a binomial. Is it a difference of two squares? So we can see 16 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, and 9 is a perfect square. So we have 4x squared minus 3 squared. So this factors into 4x plus 3 times 4x minus 3. So you can see how quick these can go once you get the hang of them. Number 4, is there a GCF? Yes, there is on this one. 4x goes into both of these. So we'll put out, pull out 4x. We'll divide each term by 4x, and we get x squared minus 16. So now we just deal with what's left. It's a binomial, so is it a difference of two squares? Definitely a difference, and they're both perfect squares. So this time we're going to have uh, x squared minus 4 squared. So you get x plus 4 times x minus 4, and we don't want to forget we pulled out a GCF, so we got to write it on the outside. Now we're going to talk about uh, a difference of two cubes. So instead of having two squared terms, that's a difference, we'll have two cube terms. And when this happens, this one's a little bit more complex, but just find the patterns. The first parenthesis is just going to be x minus y. These two middle signs will always match up. For the second parenthesis, you're going to square the first term, so square the x. This next sign will always be opposite whatever this sign is. So these are going to be opposite signs. The middle term is just these two multiplied together. And the last term is the last term squared. So again, we're still going to look for a GCF first and what size is it. So on this problem here, is there a GCF? No, it's a, it's a binomial. It's a difference. Is it a difference of two cubes? So yes, it is. We have x to the third power minus 2 to the third power. So let's use this pattern up here. So the first parenthesis is going to be exactly the same, x minus 2. Then we're going to get the first term squared. The opposite sign, so this is minus, so this will be a plus. Multiply these together, you get 2x, and the last term squared. And then this is fully factored. Let's try this next one over here. So there's GCF, there is none, it's a binomial. Uh, is it a difference of cubes? Now when I see the cube there, that gives it away. It's also a difference, and I know 64 is a perfect cube. It's also a perfect square, but because of this three, I know it's gonna be difference of cubes as opposed to difference of squares. So here we're gonna have x cubed minus four cubed. 
So the first parenthesis is going to be a minus, exactly the same. Then the first term squared, opposite sign, those multiplied together, square the last term. Done. Number seven down here, look for a GCF, there is none. So it's a binomial, and it's I see it's a difference, and I'm I see I know 27 is a perfect cube. I see the cube, and I know one's a perfect cube, so this is definitely a difference of cubes. Three cubed is 27. Obviously, x cubed is x cubed, minus one cubed is one. So the first parenthesis is exactly the same. Three x minus one. The first term squared. Now we got to square the coefficient too. So square the three. Nine square the square the x opposite sign, multiply these together, and square the last term, positive one. One more over here. So step one, look for a GCF. There is a GCF here. They both have x in common. Now you're pulling out of an x here, so obviously this is x cubed. Now some people just leave that here. But remember, you're dividing these both by x. So what's x divided by x? One. So there's still a one here. And again, just look at what's left. This x is just going to hang out out here. So I see it's a binomial, it's a difference, and we have x cubed, so and, a, and we have one that's a perfect cube, so we're thinking difference of cubes. So I have x cubed minus 1 cubed, and so I'll get x minus 1, first term squared, opposite sign, multiply these in the middle, I don't need to put the 1 there, and the last term squared. Last up is sum of two cubes. So when you have a binomial and you have a sum where each side is a perfect cube, it will factor like this. Now this is going to be very similar to difference of cubes. In difference of cubes, this first parenthesis was minus because this is sum of cubes, this will be plus. You'll still get the first term squared. This sign will still be opposite. You'll still multiply the two terms together and you'll still get the last term squared. So this first problem here, there's no GCF, it's a binomial. We see the cubed here, we're already thinking cube, it's a sum, so sum of cubes, 64 is a perfect cube. So you have x cubed plus 4 cubed. So the first parenthesis will just be exactly the same, x plus 4. Square the first term, opposite sign, multiply those, square the last term. Over here, GCF, there is none, it's a binomial. Uh, we can see it's got a cubed here, 27 is a perfect cube, 1 is a perfect cube, it's a plus, so we got the sum of two cubes. So the f 3 cubed is 27, and x cubed is obviously x cubed, plus 1 cubed. Don't forget about 3 cubed for the coefficient, you got to do that as well. So first parenthesis is exactly the same. Then we'll get the first term squared, got to square the coefficient, so we get 9x squared, opposite sign, multiply the two terms for the middle and square that term for the end. Over here, GCF, there is none. What size is it? It's a binomial. So again, we see it's got a cube here. Eight's a perfect cube. Twenty-seven's a perfect cube. So this is going to factor, and it's a sum, so it's going to be a sum of two cubes. Two cubed is eight. X cubed is X cubed. And three cubed is twenty-seven. So you end up with 2x plus 3, exactly the same. Don't forget to square the 4, square the x, get 4x squared. Opposite sign, multiply the two terms, and then square the last term. And the last one over here, look for a GCF. Now this one has a GCF, it's 8x. So we're going to pull out that 8x, divide each term by 8x. Remember this is going to cancel out to uh, 1 over here. Check this out inside, it's a binomial. And we can see that we have a cubed here. One's a perfect cube, it's a sum, so we got a sum of cubes. X cubed plus one cube, so the first parenthesis is exactly the same. Square of the first term, opposite sign, multiply these together, don't need to put the one there, plus the last term squared. And those are your binomial factoring techniques.